Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Do you ever wonder how synthetic peptides are made? Well, the process of making peptides, commonly known as peptide synthesis, is a very sophisticated chemical process that allows scientists to create specific sequences of amino acids. In this podcast, we'll explore the fascinating world of peptide synthesis, shedding light on the methods and techniques used to produce these amazing compounds. So let's start out about understanding peptides in general. So peptides are short chains of amino acids, which are essentially the fundamental units that make up proteins. The unique sequence of the amino acids in a peptide determines its specific function and biological activity. Now, synthesizing peptides involves creating these sequences in a controlled and precise manner to essentially mimic naturally occurring peptides or design newer ones for specific purposes, like therapeutic drugs, vaccines, or even for research tools. So what are the different methods of peptide synthesis? Solid phase peptide synthesis, or SPPS, is the most widely used method for peptide synthesis. This technique, developed by Nobel laureate Bruce Merrifield in the 60s, involves attaching the C-terminal amino acid to an insoluble resin support. The amino acids are then sequentially added to the growing peptide chain while attached to the solid support. After synthesis, the peptide is cleaved from the resin and then purified for use. The next type of method for peptide synthesis is called liquid phase peptide synthesis. Now, this is an older method that involves performing the entire synthesis in a solution without using a solid support like SPPS. While less commonly used today, it is still used for specific applications and for synthesizing shorter peptide sequences. The next method I want to discuss is simply chemical synthesis. Now, this involves coupling individual amino acids together in a stepwise manner. While this method is thought to be more labor-intensive and time-consuming, it is suitable for producing small peptides or those peptides with very complex structures that may be difficult to make in solid phase synthesis. The last type of method that I want to discuss is recombinant DNA technology. In the realm of biotech, peptides can be also produced using recombinant DNA technology. Now, this method involves introducing a gene encoding the desired peptide into a host organism like bacteria or yeast, and then that host organism will produce the peptide through its own cellular machinery. So because SPPS is the most common example or method of creating peptides, some examples of these peptides that have been used or have been synthesized using SPPS include insulin. Probably the most widely recognized peptide is insulin. And insulin is responsible for regulating blood sugar levels, and it's been synthesized using SPPS to help treat diabetes. Another common peptide made using SPPS includes oxytocin. Oxytocin is a neuropeptide that plays a crucial role in social bonding and sex drive. The next peptide I want to discuss is melanotan 2. Now, this is a synthetic peptide that stimulates melanin production in the skin, and it's also been synthesized using SPPS. It is sometimes used for tanning purposes or sexual health. The last peptide I want to talk about is GLP-1 agonist like semaglutide. Now, semaglutide is a GLP-1 agonist or glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist that's used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes and obesity. It's a synthetic peptide designed to actually mimic the action of endogenous GLP-1 that we already have in our body. Now, this endogenous GLP-1 plays a role in blood sugar regulation and appetite suppression. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. We love having you as part of our community. And if you love what you've heard today, please share it with your friends and family on social media and have a happy, healthy week.